Good evening and welcome to the Danish Institute at Athens. My name is Kristina Vinoyak. I'm the director. Is there a... Oh, it's... Okay, good. Uh, and I want to apologize in advance for my voice and tell you all to keep a safe distance from me. I'm afraid I caught a cold. It's this time of year, isn't it? It's a very special pleasure to welcome tonight's speaker, Professor Emeritus Erik Hellea, director of the Danish Institute at Athens from 2004 until 2010. Erik Hellea earned his first degree in history at the University of Aarhus in 1972, but it was written in the cards that he was destined for something else. He had already developed an appetite for archaeology at the time, and in 1977 he earned a research degree based on a dissertation on late Minoan Crete. Since then, Eric Heller has pursued a long and distinguished academic career, including numerous publications, conferences, guest lectures, and academic boards. The thesis for his habilitation, published in 1996, is entitled The Minoan Roundel and Other Sealed Documents in the New Palatial Linear A Administration. This is where he ended up. So, Erik Haller participated in the Greek-Swedish excavations of Minoan Kidonia for the first time in 1971, and already in 1972 he became the Swedish project field director. He is co-editor of the publications of the Greek-Swedish excavations, of which the five volumes have already appeared, and he has also published a book on the master impression a clay ceiling from the Greek-Swedish excavations at Castelli Chania in 1985. Since 2010, Erik Heller has been the co-director of the Greek-Swedish-Danish excavations <laughs> at Chania, where he and his wife, uh, Birgitta Heller, have spent their recent summers preparing the eagerly awaited publications <coughs> for the results, and we are looking very much forward to hearing more about it. Please all join me in a very warm welcome to you. Christina, thank you for all those words. I don't know what to say. Uh, and thank you for inviting me um, here to the Danish Institute at Athens. Uh, so, um, to give a lecture on the Greek-Swedish excavation, uh, Greek-Swedish-Danish excavations, I'll just call it GSDE from now on, um, and also to present some of the background for the excavation. You will notice that I have changed the title a little bit. Uh, we'll have to... No. Yeah. There we are. Um, be because I found it very difficult not to give uh, some background and history of the excavation, and I mean it seriously. Um, and therefore, I want to start with the Fourth Crusade in 1204. And as we all know, it stranded in Constantinople, and as a result of that, Crete became in 1210, so to the Venetians. After the arrival in Kenya, to Kenya, uh, the Venetians wanted, uh, they built a cathedral in the uh, late 13th century, and that is the one, uh, oops. And that is, uh, that is the, here we have the church on the Castelli Hill close to the uh, harbour. This church was during the time of the Turks turned into a mosque and after the liberation of Crete again turned into a church. We see here an aerial photograph of the Castelli Hill and you will notice how densely it is inhabited. The street running at the lower part of the red rectangle. Uh, no. Thank you. 
Street, which during the uh, Venetian period was the Corso of uh, Canyan. In 1941, the Germans bombed Canyan, and the area within the Red Wreck Tunnel became completely demolished uh, and lay in ruins until the municipality in uh, 1952 leveled the area and created a small square. This activity is clearly shown uh, in the archaeological record. In places, it resulted in a 70 to 50 centimeter thick uh, layer of what we have called the post-war deposit. That's the green here on the on the section. And you will also see from this section uh, how dense and complicated the uh, excavations in Kenya uh, is. Uh, during the time there existed, that is, just after the war, there existed no archaeological service in West Crete. Uh, but in the time after the war, an English artist had collected pottery shirts from the Platea, now called the Aie Catherine uh, Square, where he, uh, <coughs> which he showed to uh, Sinclair Hood who in his turn informed a member of the local uh, municipality that there might be an important site here. And when the local inhabitants in the early 60s uh, wanted to build a new church, it was decided to give, uh, not to give a permit until the Platea had been ar investigated archaeologically. Then, in 1964, West Crete got an archaeological service and Dr. Yanis Tsidakis was appointed director. His first project was to make excavations on the Platea, and uh, this happened in 1964 and 1965. The result was finds of pottery and small finds covering the entire Minoan period. And I must say here also later excavations prove that uh, the Platea had a 5,000 years of history of the uh, town of Kanya. <coughs> you will excuse me one second. Well, Tzedakis found it would be appropriate to ask uh, a foreign school to participate in the future excavations, and he contacted Dr. Carl Gustav Sturenius from the then director of the Swedish Institute. Dr. Sturenius uh, agreed to the invitation, but there were minor obstacles because it happened during the time of the Junta, and the political climate between Sweden and Greece uh, was not the very best at the time. Finally, in 1969, all permits were given and the two trial trenches were dug, uh, and one of them in the square uh, of the Platea, uh, as it looked then in 1969. The results of the excavations were published in Athens Annals of Archaeology in 1970 under the daring title Kanya, a new Minoan center. When I use the expression daring, uh, it is because West Crete was then almost blank on the archaeological map as published in uh, Penderbury's book on Minoan Crete. Perhaps it was not so daring after all because in 1966 and 1967, Tzedakis had found both Linear A on roundels and Linear B on inscribed, uh, inscribed on stirrup jars, with inscriptions 
which were also uh, found in steel jars from Thebes in the uh, Greek mainland lower right. One further thing we, um, to emphasize the importance of Kenya was the identification of the Kedonian workshop in the Elam Street period by Jens Tidakis. It's a fairly uh, easily recognizable uh, pottery with a whitish clay and a light whitish to buff slip and decorated in a red color. I shall return to the workshop uh, later. The last thing to I want to mention before we turn uh, to the excavations was the good fortune to have Baba Spiro uh, as foreman for the workers. Spiros had started in 1907 at Knossos under Sir Arthur Evans and in Kenya he trained the young workmen uh, to perfection. The result was one of the, if not the very best team of technicians uh, in Greece. And this is, I think, uh, one of the main reasons why so many good results have come from the uh, very complicated excavations at Kenya. Then, then in 1970, the systematic excavation started with four trenches. It was before the droners had been invented, but the excavation had uh, access um, to a photo tower, uh, which enabled us to make aerial and extremely helpful photographs from a height up to 16 meter. Um, on the image to the left, you see the site uh, by the end of the 1970 excavations, which uh, exposed arch architecture from almost all my known periods. And here is the site after the excavation in 1971, which among others uh, revealed uh, bones from an infant um, unborn uh, child buried in a small pit here close to the uh, close to the hearth, sorry, here, down close to the hearth. Um, it was also here we found the first fragments of Linea 8 tablets. Um, and further, we also found um, fragments of a Linea B tablet, even though it was only realized many years later. Excavations continued inside the platea, and here you see the plan of what is exposed on the site today. We go from bedrock to, the, to modern walls. We have the pre-palatial and proto-palatial periods represented mainly in the northwestern part of the site. The dominant architecture is the neo-palatial buildings in brown, uh, while also remains, uh, remaining facets of the late Manon period is well represented. We also have a single uh, geometric structure, that is the one up there, um, and many post-geometric uh, remains. Site, the site has since the start uh, of the excavations in 1970 remained um, uh, uncovered. But in the early years of 2000, the then director of the Kenya Museum, Dr. Maria Lasaki, managed to find support for a cover, which resulted in uh, almost half a year excavation in 2005 for the holes uh, to create foundations to carry the roof. It was the original plan that the entire platea should have been covered but in the end, it became only the southern part. And here is what the site looks like today after the creation of the protecting roof. After the roof had been created, it was decided uh, to continue excavations as Greek Swedish Danish excavations with Dr. Maria um, Andrea Daki Vlasaki, who is uh, as director of all excavations on the Castelli Hill, and with Dr. Anne-Louise Chalin and the speaker as co-directors. The main purpose of the GSDE project 
uh, was to excavate, as far as the modern habitation permitted, the large building 2 of the LM382 and 3B1 period. And the area excavated is here shown in yellow. But before I go into details, I want, however, shortly to give you an idea of the periods not really excavated, that is, the um, pre- and protopalatial uh, periods. From the pre-palatial period, uh, we have three architectural phases here uh, represented with the remains from the uh, <coughs> early Minoan 2A period. We found extremely well-built walls, as you see on the top, uh, with, uh, built in small stones and covered with plaster on both faces. A characteristic feature for the period is also the, well, the um, well-constructed circular hearths with a hole or depression in the centre. Also, the pottery of the period um, is extremely fine, here uh, presented with a random examples. The most exciting uh, small find was the ivory plague, upper right. Um, we find uh, decorations in six fields, and our guess is that it is part of a gaming board and imported uh, from the Levant or Mesopotamia. Therefore, my tie tonight. Um, further, we have an interesting face of an early Minoan person. The period also revealed plenty of evidence for metalworking here represented by a mould. And lastly, can be mentioned several fragments from a boss primigenius. The protopalatial period is also represented with uh, three uh, phases here represented with the remains from the early part of the MM2 period, where we <coughs> also note uh, the walls were built by slightly larger stones, but also covered with uh, plaster as books, as you uh, can see here. The pottery is also of a, a good quality. Small finds, we have a single figurine and several bones and stone tools. And um, a scanty evidence uh, of implements for textile production with a loom weight and a decorated small spindle wall. The Neopalatian uh, period is the best preserved on the site. It consisted of four houses and remains of a fifth up north. Um, and they are divided by streets, North Street and the South Street, and with a large open square. Uh, in this period, the GSDE provided new and important information, especially uh, concerning House 3. The west corner um, of House 3 was excavated in 1964 on the left slide and exactly 50 years later, in 2014, the GSDE found the south corner and, uh, of the house with the impressive threshold to the entrance and with remains of a paved courtyard in front. Uh, in 2010, we were able to lay free the remaining, that was also the major part of the west facade, uh, seen on the uh, slide to the left, and the north corner of the house where <coughs> the upper red arrow is situated. At this point, the wall was uh, preserved to a height of more than two meters, and as a curiosa, it can be mentioned that the top of that stone up here was used as a slab stone in a floor in a later Hellenistic or Roman uh, building. Um, the wall was, as we shall see later, reused during the Elm Street period. We also did some cleanings in the old excavations, and here we discovered um, uh, the cover stones for a drain leading from House 3. 
uh, out into the main drain, which could be, uh, which we have followed all the way, speed uh, on under the south street. And I must mention that this area is unexcavated, and the drain, main drain, and the sediment was running all the way in the uh, south street. Furthermore. Um, a couple of uh, bases were discovered in the entrance to the passage between the um, houses one and three, um, and they are the ones you see here. And we think they are bases for a door or a portal leading into the uh, leading into the lane. Most interesting. Uh, was the discovery of an intramural uh, infant burial. The baby had been uh, laid in an earthen pit and covered by three flat stones. There were no grave goods uh, with the child, which is here uh, represented with some of the ribs. The tomb has been uh, fully published by Dr. Tina McGeorge. What the GSDE excavated um, of House 3 was um, with the areas that were, were all reused in the LM2 and L periods, for which reason we cannot present pottery and finds uh, in situ from that period. But I want to show you just a small collection, um, a small collection um, of the many hundred vases discovered in the neopalatial buildings to give you an idea of what uh, the site has produced. Concerning the small finds from the Neopalatian period, I want to point out only a few. Most exceptional is probably the clay bar with 12 seal impressions, 10 of which were different. As you see on the lower slide right, there are uh, string marks which goes into the clay and the strings have almost certainly been wrapped around a piece of written parchment. Of the other uh, existing uh, <coughs> finds can be mentioned fragments of um, burnt cloth found inside a small jar. Complete stone vases were also noted as several uh, linear A tablets. On the upper right slide, you see a shirt from an um, MM3 jar um, with a single sign, oops, with a single sign in size, and this is uh, the earliest um, documentation for writing at Cagna at present. Uh, recent investigations have shown that the Neopalatian uh, settlement were exposed to, two, exposed to two destructions. One series of rooms were destroyed by fire and not later inhabited. Soon after, we do not know exactly how long, the entire settlement was destroyed by fire while many of the existing walls still stood at some height. In the following LM2 period, people returned to the site and cleaned this, uh, the streets between the houses and cleaned also and resettled in some of the uh, rooms, preferably close to the outer walls. House 4 was not reused, but here two large pits were dug into the destruction debris and um, that was where most of the LM2 pottery here, represented by two Ephraim goblets, came from. Uh, left, the left one is local, while the right one is Knossian. In the North Street, a small dagger was found, and uh, the most exciting find from the period, however, was the master impression, uh, which may perhaps represent the earliest depiction of Kanya seen from the sea. The impression is well known, and I, s <clears throat> I shall not talk more about it here. In the LM3A in period, a small courtyard was uh, constructed and the GSD um, um, 
<coughs> find new building activities in the reused house street. We could only workshop started uh, to produce here represented with a fine cup with a bird motif. On a, another cup, uh, it was possible to reconstruct a lira. The finds of the uh, seal stones, in all probability, tell us that administration was still going on in the settlement. In a large pit, we found the probable burial of a puppy as a newly born dog. The red marks on the plan represent pits uh, that were simultaneously dug and which were destroying some of the resettled rooms. They were <clears throat> all of Ellen's way, one date, uh, which uh, was the end of what we have called the squatter habitation at uh, the settlement. The GSDE also provided new evidence uh, for, for the period. In the southern part, about the former open courtyard, was found part of a large kiln or oven with air holes. Unfortunately, uh, it was disturbed by later activities and we have no direct clue to, the, uh, to its function. In the northern part of the excavated area, we noted by the end of, um, of an L3A wall, a square stone that we call the door bases uh, from the near Palaisian period. Yes, it is with the arrow. And if it is really so, it is the first example in Kenya, at least, of well-cut door bases uh, in use after the Neopolitan period. And now we come to the Elam uh, 3A to 3B1 period, which was the real reason for the Greek uh, GSDE uh, with the excavation of Building 2. In 1989, we found a fragment of a linear B tablet, SQ4 down the top. That is the low one, right? Uh, deposited in an um, LM3 B in the LM3B1 period, but out of context, it couldn't be dated precisely. Then, in 1990 we discovered in room E three linear B tablets found in situ on a floor destroyed by the end of the uh, LM3B1 period. Further, in 2005, the first complete inscribed uh, steel jar was found in room B. The tablets here seen in situ on the floor provided important, uh, were important for three reasons. First, their presence indicated the presence of an administrative center, perhaps a palace or probably a palace. Second, because of the inscription of the GQ5, uh, where we find the offering of honey to Zeus and Dionysus in the shrine of Zeus. Thereby, we had, pro had a proof that Dionysus was a god already in the Bronze Age, about five, six hundred years earlier than previously thought. The third reason why the tablets uh, were important is that the handwriting, except for three signs um, <coughs> that were corrected on uh, number four, let's see if we do it right, it is the three signs we have there, um, made Jean-Pierre Olivier to suggest that they were done by the same hand, uh, by hand uh, 115 at Knossos. If he was right, Kanya would have provided evidence uh, for A or the final destruction of the palace at Knossos uh, in the LM3B period. Many scholars, however, objected to the uh, idea of Olivier, and he finally withdrew his suggestion. The problem being that uh, two tablets was not enough to prove uh, his idea, but neither are they enough to disprove them. I have always been dreaming to find in Kenya, in an LM3B context, 
a tablet saying Conoso de to Knossos. <coughs> Such a tablet actually does exist in but in Knossos, found in the north entrance passage, and written by hand 107, who also wrote several uh, tablets um, concerning cattle at West Creden sites. In 1971, Louis Goudin published an article where he suggested that these tablets were written in Kenya and sent to Knossos. I believe he is right, but cannot prove it. To my mind, however, uh, there can be little doubt that the tablets in the North Entrance Passage are of the LM3 B date. And uh, we might thus have two indications uh, of connections between Knossos and Kenya in, in, in the LM3 B period. What we therefore hoped with the Greek Swedish uh, Danish excavations was that the building would uh, provide more tablets and enough tablets uh, to prove that the same scribe had worked at both sites and thereby also settle the disputed controversy on the date of the Knossos tablets. I shall now take you uh, through building two and show you uh, what we found. In the courtyard outside the building, we found a small sheltered area with a complete pithos, which was immediately glued and uh, within a month uh, exhibited in the Archaeological Museum. In room D, uh, on the floor we found a small, very unusual decorated stand. While the exciting find was a complete pithos, uh, which had <coughs> been very carefully placed in a lying position. The pithos proved to be a storeroom for some in stone implements, broken pottery, and various small finds. Uh, to the left, you see Manolis Tsitsilidis uh, during the excavation of the pithos on the last day in, uh, of, in this trench, and to the right, a collection of the finds from inside the pithos, ready to be registered. The pithos was decorated with white and black. And you here see a small selection of the finds. Half a double vase, a burnt lid, an uninscribed clay tablet, and a couple of uh, stone tools. We have not found parallels for anything like this. And a wild guess may be that we have here a store for the handyman of the settlement with his tools and things to be repaired. In room E, where the linear B tablets were found earlier, there were unfortunately no more tablets, but a very much burned squarish hearth, and among the small finds, a mortar. In the 1990 excavation, two more small uh, fireplaces were noted, and we then suggested that some industrial activities uh, might have taken place in this room. And this seems to be confirmed by the new excavations. In room D, it proved to be a size of a room with probably two column bases and a possible fireplace between them. Such two room, uh, two, uh, room column, hello, two column rooms uh, from LM3 B period are also known from the excavations at Sisley. One curious thing, but far from unique, was that bedrock was an integral part of the room in which uh, not very many finds uh, were made except from these two small uh, decorated steel jars. Moving further north, we came to room F, which might have been uh, the location of the local butcher, to judge from the extreme amount of bones from, the, uh, from different animals spread over the western part of the floor. In the eastern part of the room, we also found a single seal stone um, and a small decorated stereotype bead or uh, spindle work. 
In the neighboring room K, lots of broken pottery came to light, as well as a <clears throat> very well preserved bronze knife. We now move to uh, room L, where you see in the upper right corner, excuse me here, um, the, of the excavation photo, a jaw and spines from a very large animal, the jaw and some of the spines. Apart from a few vases, the uh, floor deposit further revealed a big, big lump of Egyptian blue and a talismanic stone in uh, rock crystal representing a sepia. Room H, however, was the most rewarding. Up against the east wall, we came upon a string of five seal stones and a unique, complete amulet uh, in rock crystal. The seal stones uh, all have figural motifs as they always have when used in the administrative doc, uh, linear B documents. And concerning the motifs, um, sorry. Concerning the motifs, the two left and the two right uh, are with animals while the central one uh, depicts two human figures. Of other finds from room H, I would like to point out the large uh, handmade burnished jar seen upper right. Upper left, a small cup, glass three, in the Cadonian workshop, which covered a big uh, ivory handle. In front of glass three, a small uh, bronze needle was found, and the carved, if it is a handle, ivory handle, uh, B15, is not complete, and the excavation photo can tell you uh, why. As you will see, it was found just on the edge. It was found just on the edge. <coughs> just on the edge of a Hellenistic pit. And here you have the, uh, the ivory uh, carving. And when the pit was dug, the ivory object um, was very simply broken. And where the soil of the well is deposited, we do not know. But it is a very good example to illustrate how earlier finds may end up in later contexts. Finally, um, we get to room M uh, with a wall preserved to a height of almost two meters. The best preserved and the highest from the Minoan period in Kanyan. The room had seven floors and a large Kuskura structure, perhaps ovens, uh, were situated in the northern part of the room. We have at present no uh, idea uh, what the structure might represent but it should be noted that uh, much ash was found on the floors and perhaps significant and surely unusual are uh, several clay or kuskra spools or bobbins found in situ on the floors. Unusual because this type of small uh, find usually is only found in the uh, latest LM3B and especially in the LM3C periods. And when I have this slide on the screen, it is also the lower left one here, um, which was on the invitation for the lecture. I just wanted to point out how complex the things are, in that we have uh, here the uh, wall foundation of the um, uh, early Christian uh, basilica. We have here, the southern wall of the basilica with a Turkish construction on top. And we have the Venetian cathedral. We have the Venetian cathedral uh, around here. We're really cutting through all our good minor elements. North of the buildings, 
of the building too we came upon a large open area with several floors uh, of the period. Here we found a few tools, a few figurines, while the majority of the pottery consisted of drinking vessels, mugs, cups, kylikers, footed cups, etc., supplemented with a few liquid containers and a few minor storage jars. The meaning of this is uncertain, but it is tempting to suggest that some kind of feasting might have taken place in this area. As you will understand from, um, we did not find more linear bead tablets in this building, but the finds in this size of the building covering more than two, 350 square meters had added considerably to the understanding of the Elms Ray 2 and 3B1 periods in Kanyan. It is within urban architecture probably the largest building so far exposed in Crete. To emphasize the importance of the site in um, LM3B1, really I shall shortly return to the Kudonian workshop uh, with which Birgitta Halaga has uh, worked a lot and which has enabled her to produce a distribution map to show how the products of this workshop is spread all over Crete at many places in the mainland, in Cyprus, in Sardinia and from what we have heard um, at international conferences, now also identified in southern Italy and the Levant. The domination of this pottery in the LM3, together with the finds of the Linear B tablets, has made many scholars to suggest that Kenya was now the center of Crete after A, not the, but A, um, destruction of the Palace of Gnosis early in the LM3-2 period. Just quickly, uh, in connection to the uh, finds with the Cadonian workshop, it is also attested by important, imported finds from these areas in that we have sacred white slip ware, South Italian handmade ware, and uh, imported Sardinian copper. In the LM3B2, the LM3B2 period is also represented at the uh, GSDE, but in architecture only in the northern part, since the buildings in the southern part were destroyed and dug away in the following LM3C period. In room H, we found in the west corner a small raised uh, play, uh, fireplace and a few vases on the floor. In the center of room F was placed an impressive hearth uh, with uh, parallel grooves incised. Uh, it was, however, destroyed by the digging of activities by the Turks inside the cathedral. The most impressive evidence of the lm 3 b tour period came from large rubbish pits, both in the southern and in the northern part of the excavated area. Among the finds can be mentioned fragments of a, line, a, a fragment of a linear A tablet, <coughs> strange mortar in terracotta, and imported Mycenaean pottery. The Adam 3C period was richly represented, and the, um, and the main focus uh, concentrated on room B with several facets and where uh, there were two successive uh, fire installations. The upper, later one, was a large squarish hearth uh, partly covered by a pithos, which is now under uh, restoration, and fragments from many more pithoi uh, in a fragmentary state of which we are not yet uh, function, of which we are not yet sure. Below the upper half was found remains of an uh, oven partly dug into the floor. It collapsed in a fire destruction whereby many, but far from all fragments of the upper uh, part, fell into the firing chamber. chamber. Extremely few of the fragments glued together, um, but we hope that enough is preserved to give us an idea of the original construction and function. 
only it seems at present that it had a circular air hole at the top. Another album uh, was discovered in room H. Uh, it was built up in uh, stones and it seems that uh, an oval rounded stone was used as a lid in the upper air hole. Large fragments um, of a cooking pot uh, not yet restored were found inside the oven. Further north, in room G, we found a partly burned LM3C floor uh, with a single uh, footed cup and a fragment from a crater decorated with quatrefoils. And I must say here, now we go to the geometric period, and the end of the LM3C period, uh, there we get a gap in the history of Kanya, because in the geometric period, almost all the pottery represented is by the late uh, geometric period. So we, we, are, we are missing about uh, 400 years. But the geometric period, and I, I should also say that uh, we know from both these excavations and the old excavations, that when people came back in the uh, late geometric period, they resettled in the ruins of these Helen's uh, Sea settlements. Uh, but the, the geometric period was originally represented in the northern part where we excavated, and here three large circular open ovens containing lots of ashes were discovered and um, set into finely constructed floors. For the moment, we do not know what those ovens, or if they are ovens, were used for, but we hope that the analysis of the ashes found in them may give us some results. The pottery of the period was mainly, as mentioned, late geometric, and the deposits also contained quite a few worked bones, here represented by a shorn uh, horned core. Inside room M of building two, uh, we excavated, sorry, um, we excavated a well of the geometric period uh, with some good pottery, and inside room H, another well. Uh, with many kilos of uh, roof tiles, which gave evidence to a habitation in the uh, Hellenistic period. From the Roman period, uh, we have only scattered evidence, mainly in the form of um, broken amphorae. In 2005 and later, we were able to close a hole in the history of Kenya in that we identified an early Christian basilica uh, with several fragments of mosaic floors preserved in situ. It was in the excavation, uh, it was the excavation in 2014 which gave us uh, the final clue to the layout of the basilica. When we excavated it, and the, the trench master is here for the, uh, tonight, uh, no. continuation of the, uh, of the wall foundation. But one of the last days of the excavation, we identified the corner of the wall foundation and suddenly the ground plan uh, made sense. The basilica had, <clears throat> as many other uh, of the period, wings. 
In, uh, the floors were largely destroyed, but we found hundreds and hundreds of tessera in the later levels. We do not know exactly when the basilica was destroyed, but the walls must uh, surely have been uh, partly visible when the Venetians built that cathedral. And in that, in that they reused the foundations of the aisles and the wings, uh, foundations of the wings. Inside the church, we excavated 14 tombs, uh, one of which contained bones from several individuals with grave gifts among them uh, many poles, as you see uh, on the lower slide. The bones are not yet studied, but we expect that they were offers to some uh, epidemic uh, disease. And now, with the Venetian Cathedral, we are back where we started, and it remains for me only to say two more things. When Tzedakis and Sturenius in 1969 predicted Kenya as a new minority center, they couldn't have been more right. This is clearly demonstrated by all excavations in the area, like the Matthew Dakis plot, the Catret 10 plot, the Splancia excavations, and the new excavations um, by Dr. Lazaki in Catrestri, and of course also the Greek Swedish and the Greek Swedish Danish excavations. I think that they have been very successful, and one of the <coughs> reasons why uh, they have been so is that there has <coughs> always been a very good collaboration between the participants. Here I want personally to thank the directors of the Castelli excavations, first Dr. Janis Tedakis and now Maria Blasaki. Uh, and an equal warm thanks go to all the directors of the 25th EFRA, with whom we have had the uh, pleasure to collaborate through the years. I also feel indebted to the directors of the Swedish part, Professor Carl Gustav Surenius and now Dr. Andreas Schelin. Also vital for the good outcome of the excavations were the staff of the museum with their <coughs> technicians, workmen, guards, etc. And of course, to all the archaeologists, both Greek and Scandinavian, uh, who have worked on the excavation with us. Thank you very much. Something that's very local to your 
Well, my ear is probably... No, I know. <laughs> 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 But if I, if I may say just one thing, your new excavations, Maria, I think proves again the extreme importance of the site in the uh, Ellen's Reby period. And if you touch first, I want to say that uh, by your lecture, uh, because it's uh, such a long collaboration we have. And I think uh, our example in Hanyang is one of the best examples of collaboration. Yeah. Of So there you have a, a, a complete history 
very, very scanty, if any, evidence from the Arab period from, uh, that was 1961 to uh, later. We might have found a little bit of that in uh, rest of excavations in 89. That's not studied yet. But otherwise, a continuous history of the settlement of India, except for those 400 years, is uh, represented at the Katia. And of course, all the other excavations that can get Maybe it's not so big a gap. Maybe we have a few pottery of, let's say, for the geometric, and just a few, just few signs of some of the And outside, date when it was constructed, nor of the final destruction. We have some, uh, we have some good pottery from the period, but now I don't, we, we only got the manuscript a few days ago, so I cannot tell you say, the, the more exact dates of those uh, um, early Byzantine uh, pottery uh, things, and um, I I didn't look up, uh, I haven't got the chance yet to look up if any of it had uh, clear marks of fire, burning, which might have been a uh, destruction. No, I'm, I'm afraid I have to disappoint you on, uh, on your question on what we know for just now. But as I, as I mentioned, something must have been standing uh, or visible, I think when the Venetians arrived, because they reused uh, the, the important foundations of the early Christian Basilica. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, really interesting uh, presentation about this wonderful collaboration. I was wondering, is the project still ongoing or uh, is there more to find in these sites, do you think? Oh. You know what? <laughs> we are getting old. <laughs> and we want to publish. So the last excavations, uh, anyway, uh, with the Scandinavians, that was the one in 2014. And so we spend all our time on uh, publishing, studying, and most of what I've shown you here, anyway, with the uh, GSDD, all this is still under study while the old excavations are more or less, uh, but then we have come very far with the last three uh, volumes of publication. 